Hi Cancer, welcome to the beginning of January 2021 general tarot update. It's Raina here. Happy New Year. So um, we're coming off of a full moon in your sign and on the 12th or 13th, depending on where you live in the world, there's going to be a new moon at 23 degrees of Capricorn. This is your opposite sign, opposite house. So this is the house of your, um, you know, marriage or committed partnerships. This is also the house of legal affairs. So there might be some kind of new developments with those as well, your clients. So that can be very good. So let's see what the cards symbolize. an additional card. Okay. Have any of you met a Sagittarian recently? <laughs> I was gonna say, have any of you met a Sagittarian recently? Uh, because uh, I'll just do the past position. We have the Temperance card, and this is a card associated with Sag. It's also a card that um, is connected to kind of that balance between the spiritual and the material side of life. And uh, when I when I um, am picking out the card for the um, heart of the matter, it's the Seven of Cups. And this is a card where there may be confusion in your life and you don't know exactly what to do about a particular choice that you have to make or that you have you have like um so much possibility there that you're a little bit torn between what to do now i will say that um if you have if you are like working in a place where perhaps um you even have like an offer for some kind, yeah, you know, actually, I was going to say an offer, maybe like, um, what do you call that? Like a, like a, a promotion or a transfer into a different office or a new job. And you're like at a crossroads in your life where you just don't know if you should uh, choose one thing over the other. Part of the, the thing that might be going on with the temperance card is that you are starting to balance your life more um, with maybe the spiritual in a lot of cases. Although, if you are a cancer person, cancer people tend to be very intuitive. So if you're one of those cancer people who has been a little bit less concerned with finances and more willing to, um, or maybe in the past you have been involved in spiritual pursuits, things that you did just because you wanted to help other people, you may have found that you needed to kind of like balance the practical side of life with that for whatever reason. So if you have been, you know, if you are like a healer or an artist and you feel like you're charging too little, or if you are someone who doesn't even know if you want to do a particular thing, and you're choosing between one possibility and another, it could be on a vague level. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that because you're becoming more balanced, you're seeing things as not having to be black or white. And that's that tends to be a lot of times what keeps people like too extreme. Either they believe that, oh my gosh, I have to become some kind of a, a monk or I have to really just earn as much money as I can within a certain time frame because you know look what's going to happen it's just kind of that kind of thing now if this is relationship oriented this could have some kind of illusory if I'm saying it right 
that you're in an illusion about something. That's why I joked about temperance, because it could be the actual person if they're a Sagittarian. But also, like getting sober could be the temperance card, or simply, you know, coming to terms with what you need in your life. And this is this is not necessarily the greatest example, but it could be in some uh, people's cases. Let's say you're in love with somebody or you're involved with somebody who is a very talented artist, but they're not very practical and you don't feel like um, when you're in this relationship with them that it's like you don't feel like they are your equal. Not that they're not equally worthy in life, but just in terms of being a partner for you. You feel frustrated. Maybe you have to pay for everything or whatever. And I, I don't like to bring money into it because it doesn't have to be like a bad thing if somebody has more money than somebody else. Not at all. I'm talking about if it's very glaringly obvious that that person is a little bit um, either irresponsible and you feel like you're kind of like uh, being the adult in the room. And in that case, that person may be very lovable, maybe a very loving person. Um, but you really uh, understand that this this thing that isn't happening is symbolic of the relationship as a whole. So if it's a dating situation, you may feel like, well, I want to have children someday. And I'm afraid that this person isn't, I'm not going to be able to count on this person uh, to be like an equal parent. It's almost like this is my other, you know, child as well. So those kinds of dynamics, and it doesn't have to be with people having kids. It could be, you know, you don't, you're afraid of committing to this person because you feel like their financial problems will become yours or whatever. Those kinds of practical matters that are getting in the way of the love situation. At the, 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 the whatchamacallit the um higher message is the ten of swords and this is a card of betrayal or the end of this situation happening so basically what i would say especially for relationship issues is that the seven of cups can be about you lying to yourself maybe you're with somebody who has an alcohol problem or some other type of sub substance abuse problem that they that they will not change. Maybe they've promised to and this kind of thing, but they haven't really um, made any concrete efforts in that direction. And you realize, you know what, this person is not going to change until they're ready to change. And you kind of, you might come to terms with it, but it might be something that is upsetting, obviously, because you feel the sense of you want to have um, this person in your life, but you realize that these are just, this is just wishful thinking on your part. So the 10 of swords is about, like if this person is cheating, for instance, you realize that you have been betrayed. You don't try to pretend that it's something other than what it is. What crosses you is the page of pentacles and to me, this can be, um, you know, some kind of a job that hasn't gone through for some reason. We are going to have at the end of the month a Mercury retrograde, and that might be kind of activated mid-month when uh, the Mercury goes into its shadow. So if that is something where the timing is off about something with a message that has to do with work, and that's why I felt like, too, with any kind of work matters, be careful of what you have uh, received because you might be getting these uh, glowing descriptions of something that may not actually translate to that in reality, where they're telling you something that isn't necessarily true overall. And they're trying to get you because they want you. Now, that's a good thing that you are wanted. Uh, they want to work with you. But on the flip side of that, it could be something that is very, um, it, it, if you if you take them up on it and you're not really sure what's going to be promised, that you could get into a situation where um, it isn't what it was 
all cracked up to be. So you want to make sure about that. Um, so mis miscommunication or distorted communication that has to do with work or money matters. Um, so if this is also trying to get a relationship off the ground, something is standing in its way. Um, and it, you know, sometimes I even think with the page of pentacles, maybe this is a new life for yourself where you are feeling like uh, if you have come from quitting drinking, for instance, or something like that, where you're trying to get yourself together, but you still have perhaps some illusions that have to be dispelled in your life. Um, or or the other person because a page represents a beginning stage of something in the middle of that maybe you started something but it's not really taking uh root it's not taking it's not uh growing um because in that growth stage in that early stage it's not it, the pentacles relate to like practical matters but you can't get it off the ground something is making it um not work out okay so what's coming in is represented by the seven of wands this may be a card where you're forced to stand your ground about something so uh an example would be um if you're getting let's say you're getting vague um work promises um because there was that solar eclipse in your sixth house that's what i was trying to say i think i got it sidetracked and and that's the house of work so maybe you have gotten multiple job offers or even within your own company there are different ways that you can ascend in that company but you feel this sense of uh something is not right so someone may be stringing you along or you feel that way um and they may also be like, along with stringing you on, um, you know, like giving excuses, but maybe also coming down on you in some way because they want to keep you in that state where you feel like, oh, I don't know if I deserve this. And with private matters, same thing. <laughs> I was going to say same shit, different, <laughs> different subject matter. Um, because uh, with your love life um if you're with somebody who's gaslighting you for instance and that to me is what the seven of cups can be about um but really like you i feel like a lot of you may willingly go into this uh you know kind of like fake um innocence where you you pretend that you believe something that really you know is not true um, that's what the 10 of swords can be like as a spiritual message saying, Hey, you know, that what they're saying is a lie. So, you know, that they, they cheated on you. You've had somebody else tell you that, and still you're pretending that it's not the case. So what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? And kind of like putting the uh, ball back in your court. And so, um, in that particular case, um, it's about you reasserting yourself if you haven't done so for a while and saying you know and in, instead of um just accepting what is that you're stating what you're going to do about something which is so important i like the way my sage is like really going strong there kind of purifying my cosmic environment so um the outcome is the two of uh, swords. I did pick a clarification card since it's kind of left us hanging here. And the two of swords is like, you have to make a decision, but you got that blindfold on. So are you And the moon can represent deception too. You're ruled by the moon. Isn't that funny? Um, you may be lying to yourself. Why are you lying to yourself? What do you stand to gain from lying to yourself? Are you trying to, um, kind of play dumb with yourself so that you can allow yourself to stay in a situation that really isn't good for you, but that you feel this sense of like, Hey, you know, this person is 
you know, this person has been part of my life for a long time and blah, 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 and try to justify it and things like that. Because, you know, this area, the seventh house is being triggered by that new moon. So for committed partnership, there's something could be going on, but I have joked that, you know, that could be the divorce, you know, a new beginning in, in your um, relationship, in your marriage, a new chapter in your relationship called divorce. The clarification card is the Ace of Cups. I don't know if that flower is supposed to represent a lotus. I have a feeling it is. And the lotus is, um, although it has another flower coming up, I don't know if that's supposed to be a lotus, but it's in the, in the water, um, where it stays pure. You know, there's all this muck, you know, below it and it's staying pure. And it's funny because Pluto is in that seventh house of committed partnership. And that can also be like this. You've experienced a lot of intensity. If you have been in a relationship with somebody, um, maybe it has really uh, caused you cancer to have to think about your attitude of relationship and it's transforming that area. And, but the thing is that how I interpret these two cards together is if you don't make a decision about your relationship, you don't have the chance for a soul level love to come into your life because you're always going to be, um, you know, in this mode of trying to, trying to make something work with somebody who may not be emotionally plugged in to you. So if you feel unsatisfied in a, um, partnership, there may be somebody out there. There is somebody, I believe there is somebody out there for you that you haven't yet met. Or if it's somebody from your past, maybe you'll hear from them during the Mercury retrograde from the end of uh, January into February. I don't know. But uh, the point being that you have to make space for that. You can't be emotionally drained, involved with somebody and then hope that you're going to meet somebody that is the right person for you. So you have to kind of step out on faith and be able to accept the fact if you're in that situation of being able to, um, you know, be alone if, it, if that's what it takes in order to make space for the person who really belongs in your life. Um, in terms of career, objectives. This can be like choosing an artistic job over something that is more, um, financially, you know, lucrative because it's coming from the heart or, um, some kind of spiritual career. Um, I was alluding to that with the temperance card, but in, on the other side, I was thinking in terms of balancing, you know, the material with the spiritual but in this case it's balancing the spiritual with the material and the spiritual taking um, predominance okay that's what i have for you cancer i hope that you enjoyed this i have a new reading that i am promoting i will link that one below full length natal chart interpretation well when i say full length actually it's an extended for an hour and extended transits for 2021 Usually, because I do a combination of those two types, it's like, um, you know, 30 minutes of one, you know, or something of 40 and 20 or something like that. So it's not, sometimes it's always leaving more to be said. Also, um, oh, and it's at a special price. I don't want to forget that part of it. And I have other readings. If you follow the link, uh, you can be on my website and you can see what else I have to offer. But I hope you have a great month or a great, actually, I'm going to come back probably in a week or so to give the end of the month, but a, a great start to this month. I hope this month, I hope that January has begun in a way that has been pleasing to you um, after 2020, of course, <laughs> and um, that you have uh, an amazing year. Take care. Bye.